Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. What's up? How are y'all? I feel like it's been forever. Anyways, I'm so glad you're here, because guess what? I'm at one of my favorite places on the planet. Can you guess where I am? Nope, not the Cheesecake Factory. No, I am not at the birthplace of the guy who created the two-story outhouse. Nope, I am here at the general the zoo. Now, I love the zoo. I don't know if it's the animals, the plants, the vegetation, or maybe just the outrageously priced food, but I just love it all so much. No, 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 this can't be happening. Y'all have just been notified that my ticket to the zoo has been canceled. Apparently the card I used to pay was declined. They took my ticket away. I don't know how this is possible. I mean, this is my card. Why wouldn't they accept this? They're saying I can't pay for a ticket in food? What is this world coming to if you can't pay admission to a zoo with some McDonald's? And now what am I gonna do? I guess, I guess I'll just go home. Hey, Andrew? Hey, Carl! Whoa, what's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, wait, are you at the zoo? Yeah, but not for long. What? Why? Well, you know how I love the zoo, right? Of course. Well, yesterday I was sitting at home and I thought, hey, I, I, I need a me day. So I went online, I bought a ticket, or so I thought. What do you mean? Well, apparently they don't accept food gift cards as payment. You have to use real money. Makes no sense. No, oh, I'm so sorry. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Go home. Stare at the abyss. Eat five pounds of chicken nuggets and cry myself to sleep. Well, don't do that. Why not? Carl, you've never been one to give up. You're kind of like Daniel in that way. Daniel? Daniel who? Double dipping Daniel? The guy who always double dips his chips into salsa? No, Daniel from the Bible. Oh, okay, good, because I'm nothing like double dipping Daniel. I would never double dip chips like that. Yuck! Uh, okay, well, well, Daniel was a prophet in the Old Testament times, and he loved God very much. All right, he sounds cool. Well, his story starts off kind of rough. You see, Daniel and his friends lived in Jerusalem, but one day they were overtaken by the people from Babylon. The king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, took Daniel and the people of Jerusalem as captives back to Babylon. Wait, do the people of Jerusalem want to go with the Babylon Babylonian knights? Babylonian knights? The People Babylon? Babylonies? The Babylon people. No, the Babylonians took them as their slaves. Babylon was much different than the place that they were used to. It definitely wasn't home. One of the biggest differences was the way that the Babylonians worshipped and who they worshipped. Oh no, that's terrible! It was, but the king had a plan for Daniel and his friends. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar asked one of his chiefs to find some men who would be fit to work at his palace, and that chief picked Daniel and three other men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, well, that's kind of nice. Did they get any special perks with their new job? Sort of. They were going to be given food from the king's table to eat. Whoa, they get to eat the king's food? That's great. I bet you he only eats the best of everything, like fancy mac and cheese with gold in it or something. Well, that's the thing. Daniel and the guys didn't want to eat the king's food. Are they out of their minds? Why would they turn down the finest meals you can find in the whole kingdom? And wouldn't that have been like an insult to the king to like reject his food? Yeah, for sure. But the four friends chose to not eat the king's food because they knew it would go against their commitment to God. So Daniel suggested to the chief that they only eat vegetables. But the chief was worried. Why? Well, he was worried that only eating vegetables would make them sick or weak, and the king wouldn't want that at all. But Daniel persuaded him to let them try it for 10 days. And guess what? Daniel ate so many carrots he became one. Nope, they actually... Wait, what? That's one of my greatest fears, eating so many carrots to actually become a carrot. Okay, anywho, it worked. Verse 15 says, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Daniel and his three friends were healthier and stronger than any of the others who'd been eating from the king's table. And over time, the four men became the most respected men in the whole kingdom. 
and Daniel even had the gift of interpreting people's dreams and visions. Wait, what does that mean? Means that God gave Daniel the ability to understand what certain dreams meant. If you keep reading the book of Daniel, you'll see all the different ways that that gift came in handy. Sounds like it. Well, now I'm just trying to figure out why you compared me to Daniel, because I don't know nothing about interpreting dreams. Well, you see, Daniel was taken away from almost everything that he'd ever known. He was taken away from his hometown and put into a new land with new rules. But Daniel knew one very important thing. Never eat yellow snow? <laughs> no. But even though everything around him had changed and was new, Daniel understood that God was still the same. And even more than that, he knew that God was always going to be with him. Huh. I guess you're right. Well, that's tough. It would be hard to not just, I don't know, give up. It would be, but Daniel's faith gave him strength to carry on. And not only that, but stand up for what he knew was right. For example, he was in no position to be denying the king's food, but he knew that in order for him to still honor God, he couldn't eat it. And look how it turned out. Because Daniel chose not to give up, but carry on, he became one of the king's most trusted servants. I bet you this isn't the end of Daniel's story, is it? Not by a long shot, but we'll get to that later. Now, about the zoo. I know, it was silly of me to think I, that I could use food as money. But I learned my lesson. I'm gonna go home, get some money, real money, and try again tomorrow. Andrew, you just sent me 20 bucks? <laughs> silly, I'll send it back. No, Carl, that's for you to get into the zoo. Wait, really? I, I just, I, I just... Carl, it's it's fine. I don't want you to give up today. And plus, there's nothing wrong with asking for help now and again. <laughs> That's the sweetest thing in the world. Thank you. I will never forget this. Seriously, I will never forget what you just did for me. No problem. Happy to do it. Do what? Uh, the money for the, the zoo that I just... Just kidding. Thanks, Andrew. Well, hello there, kids. Are you ready for today's big idea? Great! Or as a tiger might say, great! Sorry, that was funnier in my head. Anyways, today's big idea is, I won't give up, God is with me. So on the count of three, I want us all to roar the big idea like a lion, okay? Are you ready? One, two, Three, I won't give up. God is with me. Perfect. Very believable roars. I even got scared a bit. Now kids, it looks like Carl is enjoying his time at the zoo. So make sure to tune in next week so we can see what kind of animals he runs into. See you later. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV.